Structural Analysis of a 3-Axis CNC Machine, Episode 3, Forces on our Experience by X-Forces on our tool. Well, uh, I skipped the intro, uh, as in the last part, if you want to know what this is all about, look uh, at the first two parts, links below. And um, first I want to thank Jonas for uh, giving me a refresher on doing statics in uh, three dimensions. Um, <clears throat> Because we will need that today and uh, well it was uh, at a party and we were mm, uh, going through the third bottle of wine so uh, bear with me so um, let's have a look um, we have our experience uh, the upper and the lower ones uh, you know them already intimately, I guess. And uh, we have our tooltip, which is somewhere here. And uh, this time we're talking about forces on the x-axis. And we will need a few more elements and dimensions um, to do the calculations. Um, first of all, uh, we have to take our lead screw, our X lead screw, uh, that is uh, the lead nut, uh, into account. And yeah, well, let's dive in. So, let's say we have somewhere up here our upper guide rod okay and then 10 centimeters below that we have our lower guide rod and the distance between uh, our upper guide rod respectively bearings uh, and our lower guide rod um, we already used that and we called that is the distance on the z-axis between our x bearings. So in my little guy this would be the distance between that guide rod and this guide rod. What we further need is the distance between the bearings on each guide rod itself. And I do this relatively small, 2.5. Okay, so here would be one bearing, here would be the second bearing on the upper, upper upper sorry upper guide rod and this distance is on the x axis and it also is between the x bearings and we have the same thing down here One bearing and whoop, where was it? The other bearing. And I just assumed because uh, 
most CNC machines are built that way that uh, the distance here and the distance uh, between the lower bearings uh, is exactly the same. Um, we also have, of course, our tool tip, which is five centimeters. My example down here. This would be our tool tip where the force is exerted. And uh, we already used that measurement too. That is the distance on the set axis from the tool to the experience. That is the lower experience. Now, <clears throat> when you talk about X force on your spindle or your tool tip, um, you're also talking about the X spindle because the X force ultimately is created by, uh, not spindle, sorry, um, lead screw, because the X forces on your tool are ultimately created by uh, the X lead screw. And, uh, okay, this is a old uh, CD-ROM, but and, and <laughs> the spindle is up here. Um, that's pretty untypical. Um, in a real CNC machine, your spindle somewhere. And, uh, yeah, let me first draw in our exact center of our bearings. We use that always for calculating our moments. So exactly in the middle and uh, I, yeah, I'm cheating here because I know something you don't know yet. I'm drawing in our lead screw somewhere here. And then the lead nut would connect with the lead screw somewhere around here. And I call that distance here uh, on the set axis between the lead screw and our experience assembly. So this would only be that small sp uh, small distance here. Just, uh, you know, um, that we take an offset and there might be an offset between uh, the lead screw and the whole x-axis into account. And that's basically uh, all we need if we look at this from this side, so from the, here we have the x-axis and here we have the z-axis, so the x-z-plane. But that's only half the truth. Ultimately, uh, I need another piece of paper. We have also to look at it from the top. And here is our top view. And um, yeah, here, <laughs> here's the part where it gets three dimensional. <clears throat> um, in the previous two episodes, we always calculated all the forces in one plane. Uh, we won't be able to do that now. So uh, we have our, this would be my Z lead screw motor. We have uh, somewhere behind here, we have uh, the lead screw 
for the x-axis and the bearings and they are all if you look from the top all almost in line which mustn't be the case for a, a normal CNC machine so let's try to draw that so again looking now from the top on the machine we have our x bearing that is our rail x rail and uh, there are uh, somewhere our two bearings That is the middle. Okay. And looking from the top now, these are actually two bearings each. That one and that one. Yeah, it's getting three-dimensional. Don't worry, I have a nice picture for the summary. Um, and this is, of course, the distance is again x on the x-axis between our x bearings. Then to keep it the same uh, like in my other examples, I put our tool very far out, like here. And we already used that measurement too. This would be on the y-axis, the distance between tool and our experience, y, tx. And now we need our spindle. Uh, uh, why do I call it spindle? Our lead screw, which is somewhere up here. So looking for the from the top still. Here would be our lead screw with our lead nut. And this has also a certain distance and I call that on the y-axis between the lead screw and our experience, y-lx. Yeah. So basically we have uh, some new dimensions. We already had that ytx, uh, but that xx and the uh, ylx is new. And of course uh, that offset zlx between the center of our bearings and uh, the lead screw. That's also new. And again, this would be the front view and this would be the top view of our machine. Yeah, it, it's getting a bit complicated. Uh, and unfortunately my little guy doesn't have any offsets here but uh, the machine I drawn just here you can imagine the lead screw being somewhere behind here so behind the experience 
and uh, of course my spindle axis with a tooltip in front of the X bearings. Now, uh, let's do our calculations. Oh, I forgot one thing. Our center, where we have our momentums. Okay, let's get to it. Yeah, as always, we have our tool force, which uh, is exerted at the center of the tool or tip of the tool. And I draw that five centimeters long. And I already mentioned it, that force is basically, so that would be our F tool force on the x-axis. I already mentioned that. Uh, I mean, if you look at the machine from the top, the force on the tool on the x-axis is caused by the lead screw, that is the lead nut of the x-axis. Nothing else. There, there is nothing in the machine that could uh, exert an x-force otherwise. So to create that force we need to have a counter force up here on our lead screw that goes in the opposite direction. And this would be, sorry, uh, our force on the lead screw on the X axis. And this, of course, is equal to our force on the tool on the X axis. Yeah, if I move with a certain force my lead screw in this direction, uh, my tool will experience a counter force when it's going through some material in exactly the opposite action. So this is quite simple, but <clears throat> as we will see, our momentum on around the axis is now a little bit, has two components. Um, yeah. So this force is pressing in this direction, so turning around here. This force is pressing in this direction, also turning around here. So I create a momentum which goes this way around the center. And the momentum is my tool force. times the lever I have, that is the distance on the oops, y, y axis between my tool and uh, my experience. Plus the force I'm exerting on my spindle which is the same as the tool force. So again, Ftx times the offset I have from my 
between my lead screw and my X bearings. So Y L X. And one thing we l can already learn here, I mean, I can simplify that. This is FTX because we always want to know what's the moment or the load on our bearings uh, depending on FTX or on the F tool force. Y TX plus Y L X. So as long as uh, my lead screw is behind my experience, these forces add up. But if this distance would be negative, so my lead screw would be slightly before my experience, these would go in opposite directions. So uh, if YLX would become negative, my momentum, oh, let me close the bracket, my momentum or the total force on my bearings would be less. So it's always a good idea uh, when you construct your machine to have your lead screw as close as possible to your bearings. Or even if it's possible in your construction to have it a little bit in front of your bearing. I mean, yeah, there are limits to that. But uh, having your lead screw far behind your bearings is a very bad idea. So, and this momentum, sorry, we're not finished, has of course to be countered by uh, our two bearings, or keep in mind, these are four bearings. We're looking at it from the top. So we have, well, if this rotates in this direction, you have to try to push it to the other direction. And the momentum we can create here would be four times, yeah, we have four bearings, yeah, we're looking at the top, we have the three-dimensional thing already kicking in, four times the uh, force from our experience, uh, how do I call that? Mm. simply call it at the moment X for the X bearings and the forces are in direction of the Y axis, so FXY. Um, these are the only forces the bearings can exert in that case because uh, of course, they are linear bearings. They can not exert any force in that direction. I mean, the idea is that uh, they slide <laughs> effortlessly in that direction. So the y-axis, uh, along the y-axis, uh, that's the only way we can create here a counterforce. So four times the counterforce exerted by the bearings times the length yeah, of uh, our lever, and that's x, x, half. 
And then, you know, the game, uh, we have to solve these equations. We can already simplify that. So this would be 2f x y times x x. So I only divided the 2 by the 4 is ftx times ytx plus ylx and now we divide the whole shebang by xx and the 2. So we have fxy is ftx times ytx plus, sorry, ylx divided by 2 x x yeah and that's it i mean looking top down so uh, just as a reminder we're looking here at that was x and this is y. So we're looking at the x, y plane from the top and that's it. Pretty simple. And what we can glean from here is, well, uh, the trivial fact if we, uh, we put our bearings, spread them uh, wider yeah we divide the force so we would reduce the force of our bearings and uh, the further out our spindle axis or tooltip is and uh, the further out to the back uh, our lead screw is these really end up uh, the higher will be the force yeah, okay, so next step, uh, front view. And sorry, I <laughs> forgot to do the calculations uh, to scale <laughs> for our drawing. But uh, YTX this is 10 centimeters, uh, so this would be. 1 plus YLX. I've drawn that 5 centimeters, so that's 0.5. And that's divided by 2 times. This is also 0.5, so 1. So this is a whopping. Ooh. ftx, which we always assume as 1. So this is ftx times 1.5. And this would be 7.5 centimeters in my scale. Ooh, that's a lot. Seven point five, <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, <clears throat> I don't have enough room up here, so 
yeah this is basically 1.5 in length yeah and it's easy to see I mean these levels are big and these levels are small so our bearings and at least as I've drawn them have to take a, a lot of force and yeah let's do the same for uh, the other plane we're looking here again at the front so we have our Z and X axis so just as a reminder we're looking here at Z and X axis so the X Z plane we have our tool force down here I'm doing that five centimeters long. That's F tool on the X axis and yeah, you remember we have our lead screw and the lead nut a little bit offset and It's exactly the same force like down here, only in the opposite direction. So this would be our F tool X again. And now we can calculate the momentums and for reasons that will become apparent when we do the summary, I do that in blue. So this is trying to return around the center of our x-axis in this direction. And it has a lever yeah let's write down the momentum it has so f t x and it has a lever of z t x so the distance from tool to our lower experience plus half our zx so on the z-axis the distance between our upper and lower bearing so plus half of zx And from that, we will have to subtract this momentum, which is created by the same force, uh, but by our lead screw. And yeah, this goes into the opposite direction if our lead screw is offset from the center downwards. If that distance here, the ZLX, would be uh, negative, so uh, above our center, this would add to the total momentum. So if your lead screw is not completely centered, between upper and lower bearings it's a good idea if you have to build in an offset in your machine 
to put it down, not upwards. If you put it upwards, you create higher momentums and therefore higher forces on your bearings. So that would be minus Ftx times Zlx. And this would be just getting the Ftx out, Ftx times Z, Tx plus Zx half minus Zl. Yeah, no. Quite a lot of stuff going on. Um, okay, and uh, our counter forces created by the X bearings, which go, okay, if this is going this direction, we have to press in the other direction. So on this side, on the left side, it goes upwards. And on the right side, yeah, we're trying to rotate it here the other direction, it goes downwards. running out of paper here. <laughs> so our counter momentum would be four times our force on the bearings and this is the force on our X bearings on the um, Z axis. So F X Z times four, we apply it four times, and our lever each time is half of that x x distance, so the distance between the bearings. Uh, on the x-axis, I mean the lever, we can just project it down here to our rotational center. So fzx times 4xx half, and yeah, that is, we can do this in one swoop just yeah you see what I'm doing there and okay I'm running out of space so I continue up here so f x z is equal to F two X now I take this term that is Z T X plus Z X half minus Z L X just copying from here, divided by 2xx.
I don't like that. <clears throat> no, it's a bit cumbersome, so... I basically multiply top and bottom by two. So two flat tx plus flat x minus two flat lx divided by for x x so we don't have uh, here over under over under two times mm, it's a bit cumbersome so yeah but um, <clears throat> I mean some trivial informations here uh, the farther out your tool is from your bearings uh, the higher the forces with the factor two, so this has a great influence. Um, also an influence has the distance on this force, the distance between your upper and your lower bearing. And the force increases actually if uh, upper and lower bearing are apart from another which is um, kind of a problem because in our other, uh, in our first two episodes looking at the uh, Y and Z forces uh, on the tool, it was always a good thing to have uh, your upper and lower bearings as far apart as possible. So yeah, little trade-off here. And then also with the factor two, so very important, uh, the offset of your lead screw from the center of all bearings. Yeah, The bigger we make that, the lower the force becomes on our bearings. I mean, uh, it's easy to see. Uh, in <laughs> Theoretically, if you could put your lead screw at the same height as your tooltip, you see the forces would immediately cancel each other out and uh, we would have no forces on the bearings at all. Uh, of course you cannot put in a real machine uh, your lead screw <laughs> at the same height uh, as your tool. It's quite impossible. But uh, what might be in some constructions uh, possible is to put uh, your lead screw uh, at least at the height of your lower bearings. That might work in some cases. But uh, just remember, if you have a slight offset uh, in your constructions, it's a good idea to yeah, go downwards with the offset, not upwards. And now we have to calculate the whole thing, uh, at least for our drawing. And um, so FTX is one. Yeah, we well, don't have to write that down again. Uh, two set TX. I drawn that five centimeters in my drawing, which uh, is in my scale 0.5. So two times 0.5 is one plus ZX. That was the distance uh, on the set axis between lower and upper bearings. It's 10 centimeters, so according to my steel, it's again one. And then minus two ZLX. And this is only 2.5 centimeters times two is five centimeters. And in my scale, yeah, 10 centimeters is one. So this is minus O. Point five, and we divide that by xx, which is also 0 0.5, yeah, five centimeters. So on my scale, 0 0.5, two times that is 0 0.5 well, times four is two, 
and this is one two one point five yeah divided by two is o point seven five and uh, five <laughs> centimeters uh, is one in my forces. So to scale, these forces have to be 3.75. And I wonder Yeah, of course, not enough room. So yeah, that's our formula, which is also quite simple for the forces on our x bearings in z direction and yeah in the x z plane and we have the same for the x y plane we have uh, our formula And these are the forces on the tool, uh, on the bearings, on the X bearings in the Y direction. <laughs> and uh, in the summary, we will bring both together. So, yeah, this was our formula here. But before that we do that, uh, as always, uh, we use that nice um, software link below uh, to verify if my doodle uh, here, uh, my doodles are correct. So yeah, let me get a printout from the software. So let's first have a look at the top view. Uh, yeah, that's actually, yeah, our bearings, our lead screw and our tool and uh, I gave the software this framework with our bearings, spindle and tool and the forces uh, yeah it's basically the same so five centimeters here is equal uh, it's the same as a force of 1.0 five centimeters here input force is 1.0 and the software calculates for one uh, for the node one and the node two where our bearings is a force of three and minus three so exactly what we expected uh, well not exactly um, because three and minus three is twice what we calculated. We calculated 1.5 and 1.5, but uh, since this is a 2D software, it doesn't really know that these are in fact two bearings each. So yeah, we have to divide that by two each time. So yeah. 
that looks promising and 1.5 would be well 7.5 in my scale and I have exactly the same problem my sheet of paper is too short That looks actually quite good. Again, I it's basically the same. I just uh, drawn out the framework for the software as two triangles. Yeah, very nice. So let's have a look at our other bearings, uh, at other, at our other plane, if I can find it. Yeah, that was this picture with the uh, somewhat longer formulas and uh, I've drawn that as, yeah, quite uh, if I can find it intricate network yeah that's it okay so uh, other color we have our two B rings Point three and point four can point two and point one that would be our four bearings. Uh, then the distance is half, so every square is 0 0.25. No, I forgot one here, doesn't matter. And we have uh, our tooltip here. And we have our lead nut here. So again, our forces would be, and now I can't find the pen, ah, here it is. And our scale, one point oh here and yeah one point oh that direction so basically exactly by the same like in our drawings yeah two units down one unit two unit quarter units, uh, one unit up, quarter unit above the bearings is uh, the force by our lead screw and then yeah the four bearings and the software calculates something like oh the software on calculates for three and four counter forces of one one point oh five one point oh six it's hard to say one point four five roughly that would be <laughs> seven point five about 0.45 and down here for this bearing yeah paper's too small I should have chosen another scale 
1.45 and for the upper bearings 1 and 2 only 1.044 1.049 yeah let's say 0.05 hmm and so <laughs> yeah uh, basically nothing. 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Uh, well, <clears throat> and we calculated not 3.75 that's the length of centimeters force 0.75 is the force i'm sorry 0.75 and 0.75 and you see in the sum yeah on each side. That is F upper plus F lower. I said lower bearing, upper, uh, up, upper bearings, lower bearings. The sum is 1.5 on each side of the forces. And our software in the sum on 1.45 plus 0.05. Yeah, and the sum is also 1.5. So the sum is uh, of the forces is correct, but the software calculates a totally different distribution of the forces and uh, yeah it basically says the lower bearings take almost all of the force and the upper bearings practically none that's interesting and that's the cause of indeterminate statics systems. Of course you see I'm hmm, I just assumed that the forces would be evenly distributed and uh, they are evenly distributed between uh, the left and the right because that's a symmetric system, but obviously not between the lower and the upper because, yeah, lower and upper around that point, it's absolutely not symmetric. Um, hmm. Let me uh, make some more calculations with the software. So, um, yeah, here's just another example. Now the, uh, yeah, beforehand we had our spindle, uh, our lead screw up here. Now I have our lead screw here on the same height as uh, our lower bearings, which would be here. And it gives us a distribution basically, well, Hmm, the same. Um, the lower bearings, three and four, take the brunt of the force with uh, well, basically 1.01. 1 .01. I'm not drawing to scale now, 1.01. .01. And the upper bearings have 
only 1.01 respectively 1.0 uh, 0 0.01 which is next to nothing and yeah well I did that for <laughs> all possible cases <clears throat> and um, I come up with a um, Excel sheet uh, so just for completeness I have here uh, our XX and I take the original yeah this dimension and uh, our ZX this is this dimension the distance on the z-axis between upper and lower bearings and I have our z-tx so on the z-axis distance between tool and lower bearing which is also always the same and then uh, I varied uh, the z-sx yeah Okay, here, here I set lead screw and here I have, why is that SX? Okay, that should be an L lead screw. Between, yeah, here in our drawing, for example, that was 0 0.25 here. Zero would be exactly in the middle and uh, then negative values yeah, minus 0 0.25 then if the lead screw would be on the same height as our upper experience that would be minus 0 0.50 and then further up here minus 0 0.50 and if it would have the same distance uh, as a tool from the lower bearing that would be somewhere up here one point minus one yeah and uh, the same distance here would be zero and distance here would be uh, sorry distance here would be oh point five oh distance here is 0.75 is that right 0.2 yeah and uh, basically I calculated for all this cases using the software the upper forces on the upper and the lower bearings so zero again would be at the same height as the center of the bearings and then we go downwards and minus would be upwards yeah it's it's uh yeah it's not nice but uh that's what it is without drawing everything anew and uh, minus one is uh, basically the symmetric case symmetric in that sense that uh, the spindle axis this would have would be symmetric from has the same distance from the center of our bearings as uh, our tool and yeah the forces yeah we talked about that if you put the lead screw upwards you got a problem creating a higher momentum so uh, the forces increase but uh, in the most upward position the F upper over F lower so basically um, the relation between upper and lower is 
O O. So it's symmetric. Yeah, F upper divided by F lower, the equivalent is one point O O. And as I move down with my lead screw, F upper receives in relation to F lower less and less force. Okay, and the sum of the forces, of course, uh, is steadily increasing. Yeah, I have some roundings around here. Oh, just ignore that. And if we put that into a curve, <laughs> so that's the blue curve, it looks like that. So this would be the distribution of forces between our the upper force on the upper spindles uh, in relation to the lower force and this would be the distance from the utmost position of R to the yeah almost at the tooltip of our lead screw yeah um, it's not even a linear curve i put in a linear curve here which is uh, the actually the no just it's linear curve and I was also able to um, yeah to come up with a function uh, it's a quadratic thing function but we well um, mm, which mimics that curve quite well. But the problem here is if I take another model for my machine, so yeah, you see I basically uh, made a lot of squares and uh, a lot of trusses. If I would use that, to less trusses which should be still a completely stiff uh, body so it's made up out of triangles and uh, a whole lot of triangles and it cannot move lead screw is in that case up here tool is here all four bearings yeah if I use that model in the software, I come up with a little bit different curve, if I can find it. Okay, if I use this model in the software, I get A different distribution yeah between uh, the forces on uh, the upper and the lower bearings and um, yeah my quadratic curve I came up with um, doesn't match that too well uh, yeah <clears throat> and what do engineers do when they are not sure? They use a safety factor. Uh, that is, they err on the safe side. So I know I have cases where we have a one-to-one -one distribution between upper and lower bearings, but I, we have also cases where we have an almost 
zero force on the upper bearing and the lower bearing is taking the brunt of the force or almost all of it. So um, I guess we'll have to go with that and uh, yeah. We can go to the summary and now it really gets 3D. Don't get uh, too confused. So we basically have uh, calculated forces in two dimensions, uh, too much sheets, and three dimensions. We first uh, calculate the forces regarding the in the xy plane and then we calculated the forces in our other plane that is in the xy plane and now we bring all together So our dimensions, uh, yeah, if we look at the side, we haven't calculated anything in the side view because uh, obviously we have no forces on our x bearings along the x-axis. So once we looked uh, from the front from here and uh, then we looked, uh, yeah, from the top and in the front view we had that uh, ZTX yeah our bearings here that is the distance to our tool just on the Z axis we had the distance between our lower and our upper bearings which is ZX Still looking from the front, we had the distance between our bearings on the upper and lower guide rod, which was x x, and uh, then we calculated the momentum, and that's the momentum around the, you guessed it, yes, our y-axis around the y-axis and uh, we came up with that formula for the force yeah that was that uh, little bit clumsy thing but uh, well, at least the total force seems to be right we are not sure about the distribution between upper and lower bearings um, our other view was from the top on our system with the bearings. Yeah, we're only seeing uh, two bearings because uh, there are two stacked on, each, on top of each other. We have still our lead screw and uh, we have uh, here our tool. So our tool out here, we have the dimension YTX the distance from the tool to our experience and we have the dimension where is it here y l x between our lead screw to the plane where our bearings are yeah, and again we have our xx, the distance between the bearings on each support rail. And of course this time we creating a momentum around the set axis. So we're looking basically 
here in this picture and this picture from uh, on the side of the machine but in three dimensions so not a flat view but uh, yeah I have to turn it this way a little bit and in result we have two forces on each bearing yeah the fy tx there's a the more tx the blue ones and uh, the green ones and uh, the blue ones which we calculated for each plane separately and now in three dimensions these forces come together and as I said, because we don't know the exact uh, distribution, um, at least I couldn't find out the exact distribution between the upper and uh, the lower bearings, I simply introduced the safety factor of two for the lower bearings, in case the lower bearings really take the whole force. And uh, that's the reason why my forces are drawn to scale why these forces are for the lower bearings longer than for the upper bearings and yeah it's the same you can uh, either draw yeah, using a force triangle the complete resulting force on the bearings uh, including the uh, angle of attack. I have it only once here. And you can simply measure that. Or you can make some yeah complicated formulas to uh, to calculate the total force and uh, the angle of attack. Yeah but the, the surprising the surprising result for me here is uh, that the lower bearings have to take up more force than the upper bearings. I mean uh, at least the software says uh, upper and lower bear forces of, on upper and lower bearings are only in balance if uh, our lead screw, where is it? Our lead screw has the same distance from the upper bearing as our uh, tool has from the lower bearing. So the system is symmetric, then the forces are distributed symmetric. Otherwise, as soon as we go a little bit downward with our lead screw, more and more forces, and not linear, it's not a linear distribution, it's, uh, yeah, some function uh, is going on the lower bearings uh, to the extreme that uh, at least in this drawing yeah to scale it was about uh, only yeah four percent of the force or something like that uh, I'm not sure, yeah, 4% or 3% of the force is taken up by the upper bearings and the rest goes to the lower bearings. And I've assumed that uh, this would also be true for uh, our green stuff. Yeah, looking at the, sorry, looking at the X, Y plane because uh, yeah the software didn't calculate the distribution between upper and lower only between left and right but uh, our other forces yeah that cause the forces in uh, our bearings so the forces of the lead screw and the forces on our tool and the force on our tool uh, they are also not symmetric in that case. So yeah, also here safety factor of two. So I give you a nice full shot and uh, yeah, 
I have to put up these graphics uh, at some point somewhere if you have uh, suggestions Google Plus or Blogger or whatever Google Drive uh, what you think is more convenient um, yeah just give me a hoot in uh, the comments down there or if you have a um, good idea what the ideal distribution of the forces between upper and lower bearings should be, um, give me a hoot too. And now, as always, um, I will take out the calculator and uh, use that um, to find out what that means for my CNC machine. So, for my little CNC machine, <coughs> the results are catastrophic. <laughs> so, I still have my tool force of uh, 188 newtons. Um, and, uh, well, for the FXY, my measurements, I come to 581 newtons. I have to take this two times, our safety factor. And for our Fx set, in set axis, I come to 490 newtons times two. And you remember force triangle, I can draw it or I can calculate it. This is two times 760 newtons, so our 14, 1520 newtons total force for the front lower bearing uh, for the from this side we're looking at the side of the machine um, for uh, the back bearing which I obviously can show here uh, it's uh, exactly the same forces but flipped around so the resulting force would go up here and uh, for the upper bearings, it's, well, half. So the calculated value, so 760 newtons. And that's far too much. I think my SBR 10 UU bearings can take a dynamic force of 375 newtons. So um, what's my problem? My problem is obviously um, if we look at the formulas the forces are always divided by 2xx respectively by 4xx so the distance of the bearings along the x-axis or yeah that distance here center of the bearings and um, my current design uh, is exactly like that. I put them as close together as possible and that leaves me 33 millimeters or basically in this case nothing so I can have the most travel on the axis. Uh, yeah, pipe dreams. So I will have to put my bearings apart a bit, little bit more. Hmm. Yeah, well. Uh, I know it got a little bit complicated and convoluted uh, this time. Um, The next episode will be a lot easier because, huh, believe it or not, we have only one force left to calculate. That's the load put on the bearings by the weight of our whole X, Y assembly plus uh, the weight of the spindle. 
yeah and if you have again any ideas how uh, to do the distribution between upper and lower bearings um, uh, in a more scientific way <laughs> let me know um, comment section please and um, well I see you next time for the calculation uh, of the load by the weight of our whole machine which will be much more simpler I promise. Till then, bye.